I am Philip Thompson. Today, I am the face of America. Idaho often gets um, misconstrued as being some uh, bastion of white supremacy, um, antiquated old fashioned, and we're traditional, but I would, I would hesitate to say we're antiquated and old fashioned. Um, the black population has always been very small, it's less than 1% now, um, but blacks have enjoyed many liberties here that weren't enjoyed in the rest of the country, such as uh, Idaho is one of few states that had lynchings but never lynched a black person. Um, Idaho passed a civil rights law three years before the feds did. Idaho, um, on another racial front, has the oldest synagogue west of the Mississippi. So even though we're known as being, or, or we're categorized as those who've never been to Idaho, as some, you know, bastion of white supremacy that's unsafe for those who aren't white, if you actually come here, the data is actually to the contrary. Uh, my name is Philip Thompson. Um, I am executive director and board president of the Black History Museum. Um, Sixth generation Idahoan, Muslim, black, um, work with Parkinson's patients, boxing coach, jack of all trades. Hey, the um, Idaho Black History Museum is, uh, of course, created in 1999, and we're actually approaching our 20th anniversary on uh, March 8th. Um, it was actually, it, ho it is housed in the first black church that was created in the state of Idaho. It was actually built by my great-great-grandfather and his father-in-law. They came to Idaho in 1905. And um, first it was a house fellowship. Years later, they had enough money to build a church. The church was erected in 1921, served until 1995. They went to a much larger facility. And at that time, my mother had the um, forethought to uh, create, she said, preserve the building because it was on the historical registry and make it into a museum. It was moved to its current location in 1998, and then we opened our doors in 1999, and we've been operating ever since. Blacks first came to um, what is now known as Idaho during the mining boom in the late 1800s, or mid 1800s. Um, but it's always been a very small community. Um, in 1865, there were actually eight black exclusion and Chinese exclusion laws created in um, Idaho to keep blacks from coming here, but still many came. Um, Idaho didn't become a state until 1890. And at that time, um, that for for that removed all of the you know black exclusion laws, Chinese exclusion laws, and we gained statehood um, because uh, Abraham Lincoln, during the Civil War, wanted access to our resources, so he fast tracked us becoming a state, separated us from Montana territory, made Idaho territory, so they could have rights to our uh, minerals, and also because there was a contingent of Confederates in Idaho and they were concerned that we'd become a slave practicing state. And so um, that was a rather uh, calculated way to avoid that. Blacks have always been a very small um, population here, but blacks have always lived um, separate from the narrative of a lot of the rest of the country. Um, here in Boise, we have a police force of about 300 people at Boise Police, and I believe like 28 of which are black, which is over-representation as far as black police officers for an area that you're not even 1% of the population. Um, we also have uh, my mother, she's a state official, she's a senator. Um, she was the first black elected to that office, and before that to the House, in one of the more affluent neighborhoods in Boise. So I mean, that's counter to the narrative that, hey, Black people aren't safe here. And I think um, Boise and Idaho as a whole, although Boise isn't necessarily Sandpoint, Sandpoint isn't Middleton, Idaho overwhelmingly is a very um, inviting location. Um, I'm Muslim. We have 11,000 Muslims in Boise, Idaho, which is a rather large population, yet you don't have this disconnect between the Muslim and non-Muslim population. We have a huge refugee population. We're one of the most successful refugee relocation destinations in the world, internationally renowned. Um, Twin Falls and Boise. Twin Falls is a little more conservative than we are. And um, I went and met with a representative from their mosque, and he had nothing but laudatory things to say about how great Twin Falls was. They've had a hiccup or two, but every time that has happened, meaning some type of hateful letter or a cross burn, the entire city came out to support them. So yes, we have isolated incidents of human issues, but they're far fewer than you would find. I challenge you to find some place of comparable size with this degree of um, harmonious coexistence.